Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Mobile One, we're going to be talking about how you can determine if your engine has hidden damage. And to do so, I've taken oil samples from my engine after a 3,000 mile road trip. The purpose of this video is to help show what you can learn about your engine and vehicle by having an oil analysis performed. Uh, there's actually a surprising amount of information these have uh, and even brought up some red flags for my own car. Now, it's worth mentioning, 3,000 miles is not a lot for modern engine oils. This video isn't about when you should be changing your engine oil. I'd recommend consulting your owner's manual for that information. Instead, we're talking about what can we learn with an oil analysis. So for this test, I took 12 total samples at three different intervals for my Crosstrek. So we start off with fresh oil right out of the bottle, uh, took a sample of that, then put that oil, after changing the oil in my Crosstrek, put the new oil in the car, let it idle for 15 minutes, and then I took another sample. So this makes sure anything that was left behind in that engine, we know what our starting point is with the fresh oil in there. And then after driving 3,000 miles, I took the final sample. So we've got our before and after with these three samples. To get those 3,000 miles, I did a nice scenic road trip and checked out the Grand Tetons as well as Yellowstone National Park, and a bear was kind enough to check in on our mileage count about halfway through. I happily reported to the bear progress was going well. So at each of these intervals, new, 15 minutes of idling, and after 3,000 miles, I took four samples. And then I sent out a set of samples to Mobile One, and then because this video is sponsored by Mobile One, I sent out another set of samples to a third-party lab to independently verify the results. Now, I also took a backup sample at each interval, and that's the samples that you see in front of me here. Just in case any of these were to get lost in the mail, I could have another option that I could send out. So what can we learn from an oil analysis? Well, I spoke with Mobile One engineers who manage the oil analysis for large trucking fleets, and they told me how they go through one of these sheets to look at information regarding your engine's health, as well as how much remaining life you have within your engine oil. We'll go through this based on four main themes. First, what's our engine health? Second, what's our oil health? Third, how did the third-party lab results compare? And fourth, what were the red flags that came up for my car? Starting with engine health, Mobile One engineers stated the first things they look at on an analysis are the wear and contaminant blocks. Both of these blocks are measured in parts per million, or PPM, meaning the quantity of these metals present out of a sample of one million parts. As we look at the data throughout this video, know that the first column represents the first oil sample, fresh oil, the second column represents the second sample after 15 minutes of idling, and the third column represents the third sample after 3,000 miles of driving. Worth mentioning, molybdenum is present in the oil itself, so you're looking to see if there's a significant increase. With all the other metals, the starting point is essentially zero, and if you see a significant increase, it can be indicative of certain engine components wearing. For example, a spike in aluminum could mean piston, block, or cylinder head wear, Copper could mean worn bearings, iron could mean worn cylinders, crankshaft, or camshafts, and I've provided a fairly generalized list of what certain metals could mean for how engine components are performing. The only and very slight increase on wear metals from the Mobile One analysis was iron at 4 ppm starting at zero. Not enough for it to actually matter yet, uh, and that matches with the third party results uh, for both aluminum at 2 ppm and iron at 4 ppm after 3,000 miles. Aside from wear metals, the other part of engine health is looking at contaminants. Potassium and sodium can be introduced through the engine coolant. Seeing a noticeable spike here could mean that engine coolant is making its way into the engine oil, and this could be indicative of a head gasket failure. Mobile One says if this number is over about 75 parts per million, that's when you want to start being concerned. The good news is for my engine, it was well below that. Silicon, which will commonly come from sand or dirt ingress into the oil, can help indicate how well the air filter is functioning. This is a particularly important metric to focus on if you're running an aftermarket air filter, which might not filter out contaminants as well as an OE filter. Silicon is very hard and abrasive, so if you get a significant amount of it in your oil, it starts to chew up your engine internals. In speaking with a company that operates in the rally space, they said their biggest challenge was finding air filters that could properly hold out dirt from getting in the engine, which then chews up the cylinder liners, so you start to get lots of blow-by and oil consumption, and ultimately ruin the engines. Silicon can also come from RTV, an engine sealant used in assembly. 
And finally, regarding engine wear, Mobile One reiterated the importance of changing out your oil early on the very first time when you're breaking in that engine to make sure those initial contaminants and wear metals that are present when the engine is being built are removed quickly and taken out from that initial break-in period. It's not the synthetic versus conventional debate that's important for break-in, though I use synthetic for my cars, but rather that you change the oil early the first time to remove contaminants from the initial manufacturing and break-in period. Now that we know the health of our engine, we want to check the health of our oil. So this lets us know whether we can continue using the engine oil or if it needs to be changed out. So we have a block on our analysis dedicated to the lubricant. First up is fuel dilution. Obviously you don't want to see fuel mixing in the oil. It's a sign you're potentially running rich or have excessive blow by, possibly a fuel leak, and this will thin out your oil. Now I have an alert here from Mobile One. We'll get into the cautions at the end. But after 3000 miles, Mobile One reported low fuel dilution and the third party said no fuel showed up. Next, we get to total base number or TBN. So as you have combustion occurring, blow by gets past this piston and can cause contaminants to enter within your engine oil here in the crankcase. So those contaminants can cause acids to form. To counteract acid formation, you have calcium and magnesium in the oil, as you can see is present in the additives. Calcium and magnesium neutralize these acids. So your TBN is basically telling you how much acid fighting power the oil has left in it. As it gets lower, you need to replace the oil. The third party lab says you want your TBN to be above one and after 3000 miles, again, not that many miles, the TBN value measured was above one by both mobile one and measured by the third party. Now, viscosity is obviously an important metric for motor oils. It's the big numbers you see on the side of the bottle. So in this case, at 100 degrees C, our hot rating is this SAE 20 grade. And so an SAE 20 grade oil should have a viscosity between 6.9 and 9.3 millimeters squared per second. And our Mobile One results show that happening. So it's starting off at 8.6 and then ending up at 7.4. If the viscosity measurement is too low, it could be indicative of fuel or water getting into the oil. If the viscosity is too high, it's likely a result of oxidation, meaning the oil is no longer usable and needs to be changed. Which leads us to oxidation, which is one of the biggest factors in determining the health of an oil. So oxidation is oxygen mixing with that oil and degrading it. And it's going to happen no matter what. Your goal is to simply delay this process as long as possible. Oxidation causes the oil to thicken, form sludge and deposits, and accelerates the degradation of the oil. Any oxidants are used as additives to delay this as long as possible, but once it starts happening, you'll notice the viscosity of the oil can start to change, and this can happen quickly once it starts to get bad. Obviously, you want to change your oil before it gets too thick. In this case, after 3,000 miles, there isn't any noticeable oxidation. Nitration is a somewhat similar idea to oxidation, except in this case, it's nitrogen that's mixing with the oil. That nitrogen coming from nitrogen oxides, which are formed during combustion, then making their way past the piston from blow-by and mixing with the oil. It causes degradation to the oil, and in this case our measurement shows a small increase in nitration, but not enough to warrant changing the oil. Soot is a collection of carbon particles that form from incomplete combustion, and if this soot gets into the oil, it can shorten your oil filter life, and also act abrasive to the engine. Also, too much soot can overload your exhaust emissions equipment. Since this is a port-injected gasoline engine, soot really isn't an issue, but for modern direct injection gasoline engines, as well as diesel engines, it's definitely something you want to monitor. In our case, measured levels were very low. Finally, you want to make sure your oil doesn't have any water or coolant content. This can reduce the oil's viscosity and thus reduce its effectiveness at protecting your engine. Thankfully, both Mobile One and the third-party analysis did not find any coolant or water in the oil. Now, as mentioned, I wanted to make sure I could trust all the results, so I sent samples to two labs, and for the most part, both labs' results matched well, especially when you consider the tolerances of some of these tests. 
Now, I did want to provide the third party's assessment of the oil after 3,000 miles, uh, and what I found a bit surprising about it was just how lighthearted and happy toned uh, this analysis was. I mean, this is you know uh, an oil analysis we're talking about, but they seem pretty amped, pretty passionate about it. So that was excited to see. Anyways, they say, Jason, we're glad this oil is still in use because 3,000 miles was no sweat for your cross trek. Universal averages for this type of Subaru engine show typical wear after about 6,200 miles of oil use. You haven't gone that long on this oil yet, and wear metals are much lower, just as one might expect. No internal issues stand out in this data, and there isn't any indication of poor wear. Low silicon and insolubles show the air and oil filters are both doing a good job, and no fuel or water showed up. The TBN is good at 5.7, so add another two to 3,000 miles to this oil. Very nice. How about that? Happy, excited oil analysis. Worth mentioning, third-party labs don't know what type of oil you're using, so they're unlikely to recommend a change interval longer than the manufacturer recommendation. Mobile One's testing has shown these oils can last as long as 20,000 miles, and I have a video showing the validation testing involved of a long-life oil if you're interested in checking it out. Now, that is not to say that there were not any cautions brought up. Mobile One had two things that they noted to be concerning. First of which was fuel dilution as a percentage of volume at 7.62%. So that is pretty significant, all things considered. Now, this was after just 15 minutes of idling. So the engine was cold, it idled for 15 minutes, warming itself up before I took that sample. But then it says the fuel dilution was 7.6%. So if there was that much extra fuel being dumped into the cylinders and then making its way into the oil, I think there would be other signs that that was occurring. So it may just be that this was a misleading data point. Either way, at the 3,000 mile mark, the fuel dilution was not anywhere near what that measurement was. Uh, and so as a result, neither the third party lab nor Mobile One seeing a significant amount of fuel in the oil at that 3,000 mile mark. So I don't think that one needs much concern. There was one more caution from Mobile One in the oil viscosity. Mobile One measured this at 7.4 and the third party at 7.31, so similar results after 3,000 miles. Now, you could expect to see a small drop in viscosity from shearing viscosity modifiers. These are large molecules that are additives, and if you break up these large molecules, then you're decreasing your viscosity. The important thing is you don't want to see the oil fall out of its SAE viscosity grade, and in this case, it does not. Speaking with Mobile One, they believe the initial viscosity drop is normal, where the viscosity will then plateau and then slowly increase in viscosity as it reaches the oil's end of life. So while this is generally expected behavior, I did take a look at some of the potential causes for a viscosity drop just to make sure everything looked in order. It could be that the fuel injectors are leaking or running a bit rich and fuel is getting into the oil slowly, decreasing the viscosity. That said, I have checked my fuel trims and air fuel ratios and things seem to be normal and I don't have any engine codes, so it's something to continue monitoring. With more samples and more analysis, it's something I can figure out if it's actually the beginning of a real problem or nothing to be concerned with. And that's kind of the whole point of this oil analysis, right? You're looking at the health of your engine, the health of your engine oil, and you're monitoring things so that you can catch things before they become more serious problems. You can look into things and make sure, hey, my engine health is good, everything's going as planned, or if things pop up, address them as needed. So this was my first time doing an oil analysis, uh, and I found it quite fascinating. So I hope you enjoyed learning about this as well. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.